Hi, my name's Simon from TradeRoomPlus.com and today we're going to be looking at the asset of the day, which are global indices. Start off by having a look at the FTSE 100 and see where we think we may be going. Um, now, we still look like we're on a bit of an ascending trend on the FTSE if we draw sort of an ascending channel like here, still making higher highs, higher lows on, on the major higher lows, which are sort of here. Um, so it'd be interesting to see where we go um, from where we are now. We can pull a Fibonacci retracement from this swing low to swing high as well to maybe support some trading decisions or just zoom in a fraction more. And um, there's potentially a level of interest here at this uh, 7422 with the 50% fib with this daily low. So if the market pulls back here, that may be a buying opportunity. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens. I think it'll be interesting to see if we hold Friday's low, which is here at uh, around 7503. So I think if we hold that level, we could well see some further upside. And we have made lower highs and lower lows over the past uh, four days, where you could argue today's not really been set. But if we put pressure on that 700 level, then we may see some further downside. I mean, if you're going to trade short on an index, the FTSE is probably the one, because it, although it has obviously ground up after the coronavirus, it's nowhere near as strong as some of the other indices, particularly the US indices. So I think uh, if you are going to short index, it might be that one. So I think if you eye up, um, that uh, 7500 level, the lower Friday, wait for the market to retest it, maybe bounce, look for the market to break short, that could be an opportunity, you could put your stop up there if you're anticipating a swing. Um, I don't know, if you're bullish as well, I guess you could see if it fakes out of that level, but but for me, I think it's looking more short with the fact that we've got these lower highs, so that'd be interesting for me. Of course, if we do get strength, simple double top um, at the uh, full retracement, and then potentially looking at uh, the post corona high as well, which is a fraction a fraction higher. So you may consider this area of sell zone here um, all the way up to uh, 7642. So we'll just have to see what happens. Now moving on to the DAX, DAX is very sideways at the moment. This uh, 14800, we've seen a repetition of the round numbers. You'll see these work time and time again on the indices is, um, is very interesting. Every time the market's been down here, it's been bought up on this daily time frame close there pretty much a touch there and again like the FTSE uh, we're making these lower highs lower lows over the past few days we did almost we pretty much double top to the tick um, up here at uh, 16300 a really nice double top there on the DAX so if we come down start putting pressure on that 14800 market bounces further downside potential as well but it'll be interesting to see what that uh, that 800 level does that's going to be a key level for us if we if we have a look this week it's just been so so um sort of holding of the market so far that um, we're going to see some sort of reaction from it i would anticipate similar again round number 16300 the all-time high you know we're in sideways trading ranges at the moment so if we keep swinging between them then we want to be buying and selling um the rage the range and then we'll see if it bounces uh and breaks below that 800. I mean, there's so much news at the moment. There's Ukraine and the Russia tensions. There's also global inflation, energy prices. Um, so we could have another, like to see some volatility for the continued time. It would just be a case of which direction we go. But we want to be looking at key levels in order to assess that. So moving on to US 30, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And we've seen some more volatility here than we have on the DAX. If we just zoom out a fraction more. Um, this big, we got faked out of a couple of big levels here. Um, had these lows down here on the Dow, came very, very close to this. This is a double bottom we were eyeing up last week, but it didn't quite get there. Um, at, uh, surprise, surprise, another round number, 33,000 there. We were looking for the market to come there and, and see if it was going to work um, for us, but it doesn't. I don't think we'll revisit that level this week, but you never know with the volatility. Um, this is interesting. This move's already happened, a move that um, we traded on the S&P on Friday. It was actually a similar move on the... Uh, on the Dow as well, where we see, saw that resistance come there and become support. That's one we did take on the S&P um, trade. We'll be able to see that in a moment. I'm um, assuming it's the same level, not also the S&P so far. So again, are we going to put pressure onto this uh, 34, guess what, 800, another round number? Um, or are we going to hold this level? It'll be interesting to see. I mean, if we start putting more of a wick on here and challenging Friday's high, then we may look for a break long, maybe take a first profit target at last week's high and then see if we can start challenging the all-time highs that would be the bullish view at the moment and um, the bearish view would of course be challenging this 800 level here if the market wants to continue to put pressure and break down we can of course pull 
uh, a Fibonacci uh, retracement there and see if it uh, sort of finds a bit of support we're in that 38 percent you can see there's a little bit more activity as well we've got these highs here before we broke up so we might well find some support down at that with the 38.2 fib retracement as well but that's what's interesting me on the doubt at the moment is just seeing how this candle forms to give me an idea of whether i want to potentially get long at the break of friday's high or maybe short at the break at the bottom side we'll have to wait and see so moving on to the s p 500 this was the s p trade we took you can see there um the s p wasn't quite as neat as the dow but it came down to that uh 4452 there where we had that resistance came support we did trade that um, on Friday so again that's the level of interest for us um, th to work from for a potential short or long side zoom out a bit further you can see these major major support levels we faked out of quite similar to the Dow and then we retested those on two subs on two subsequent days so you know the market's shown that it's not ready to sort of fall down that looks like the 50 percent to me I mean it might be fractionally below let me just pull a uh, fib here from this um, this high to this low in fact Sorry, the 61.8, not the 50%. Um, so you can see here how this how this fib has worked absolutely beautifully on the S&P 500. You, I mean, I didn't actually trade that. Um, easy to see in hindsight, but you've got support there, comes up, finds resistance, but it's also got confluence of the 61.8. Absolutely beautiful little move there. So it'll be interesting to see again, are we going to be able to take Friday's high? Are we going to show ourselves that we're making higher lows here to take, take a long where we can either take profit at the high of last week or add on that addition and maybe look to open up this uh, sort of 4740 type level that'd be interesting to see or are we going to come down and put pressure on the spx and break below the 4452 level so all to play for this week and let's finally just jump on to the nasdaq that uh, has been very volatile at the moment some mixed reportings google reported well facebook reported poorly and took down the likes of snapchat and some of the other big social media companies as well um, that obviously did so well during the pandemic but as the world potentially continues to recover it feels like forever talking about that it'll be interesting to see um, nasdaq a lot more wiki a lot more volatile here um, looking like it's finding a little bit of support there at uh, 146 uh, five six days I really do need to change that color blue is not very visible so again similar business with the Nasdaq we're going to hold this level and break up or we're going to potentially come down here for a double bottom at 13 660 ish or we're going to retest Friday's high I like the S&P and Dow better out of the two but there's plenty of activity to be had across the five indices that take us all the way from the European session to the US close so we'll see where we are next week